The next one is um, my buddy Jody at FedEx. And this is a very interesting story, too, because it mirrors what I just stated. Uh, so, so just a little background here. Um, uh, FedEx happened to be in the audience when Chris Genowine and myself presented at Discover in 2015. That's a little over a year ago. And um, you know, just like you guys, right, in the audience, we may not meet, speak, we may not meet, I may not know who you are. And you'll, you'll leave today and, and you're on your merry way. FedEx, that was FedEx. And when we were canvassing customers or people to speak about IT for IT at the Discover conference, they, they raised their hand and said, yeah, we can speak. And everybody, you know, at least at HP, kind of looked to each other. It's like, did you work with them? No, I didn't work with them. Did you work? No, I didn't work with them. Who are they, All right? What did they do? No idea. So, you know, in preparation for that conference, we got into what, what do they do, and it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting. And actually, I like what they did. Um, this right here is from their presentation at this year's Discover a couple months ago. And I only took a few pieces of their slides, right, to share, you, share their story. Um, but this is sort of how they, they started the conversation. And Rick, this is your spaghetti. <laughs> this is their picture, right? I call this a scare diagram. It, it's really the whole thing on one big diagram to show you how messy it is and unorganized it is. But this is their IT environment. And um, they know that they need to modernize IT and, and they needed to move faster, <laughs> more aggressively. And so they, they picked up a, a, the open group stuff. They referenced it here in their presentation adequately. Uh, and as a result, they created this. So they branded it as well in FedEx colors. They, they took the, the basic concepts and they put this conveyor belt looking thing around there to represent the service model backbone and the, the back and forth nature and fluidity of, of the model, right? Because nothing's a silo, but you have to have structure and you have to know how you're moving back and forth. And so this was really nice because, again, they personalized it and they made it FedEx. Now, underneath the covers, they know it translates to IT for IT, and you'll see that in the, in the, in the following um, slides. Uh, so uh, some shared functions. So what they did was each of the areas, they kind of personalized it. And you'll see down in the bottom, they have the KPI management parts of it, and they have uh, kind of personalized some of the key functions. But in the plan side, you'll see some correlations there. And they even int introduced uh, Gartner's bimodal perspective in that planning, right? How much are we spending on mode one versus mode two initiatives? And uh, so, th so this is their, their presentation, and I thought it was you know, wonderful, because now it was in their language, and it, but it was the same structure underneath. Uh, this is their build view, and big, uh, DevOps is another big part of their transition and how they were evolving. But the idea is you know, build, and they want to deliver. Um, those new capabilities. Uh, uh, deliver, and once they have a catalog, of course, that's where they actually uh, are able to measure consumption. And by the way, deliver, I would say, is the big disruptor in the entire value streams, in the entire IT for IT standard. And why that is, most organizations I talk to, they have plan, build, and run. They have no such thing called deliver. And, uh, their shops are organized by those three things. So deliver is sort of a new thing, and, and I think this is an area where, and I'll explain how FedEx saw, sees it and used it, uh, this is where you can deliver those commoditized uh, services in an automated way. And, and uh, this is exactly what FedEx kind of shared, and I'll share some of their stories. But de deliver is the disruptor, and this is where I think IT for IT makes a big difference for many of the shops out there that I've talked to. And run, you know, no, obviously, this is a pretty straightforward value stream, but I, I do like how they've, they've structured this, and they put the, the different functions around the center, which is uh, a, a very nice way to, to describe, you know, the, the, the fluid motion. And then, of course, the measurement goes back upstream, because that's a part of the input for all the other uh, value streams. I wanted to share sort of what, what they were talking about. There was one really key use case where they had a service in the catalog, and it needed to change. And they needed to change quickly because they had apparently they had an event in which people were bringing things into the event that needed to be checked in. And they had no such service in the catalog to provide that kind of capability. And what they did was, because they automated all of the tools to to, to, from requirements to, to deploy, they were able to go through and in one week change the service and get it out in the catalog 
which people then started using. So they only used that service and that adaptation for a week. And then once they were done using it, they killed it. And, and I think that's the epitome of where you can go when you automate and you look at the different value streams and how they interoperate because the business needs to move that fast. There's an opportunity, and if IT is sort of the uh, holding things back, right, they can't meet the opportunity and, and, it, and the business can't really grow or uh, be dynamic. And so his story was really, I think, profound to talk about how these key functions integrate and facilitate the value stream so that they can get, get in there, do their thing, and get out and put things back on track. Because stuff happens, as everybody knows. 